So now we're going to talk about section 3.2, which is something called the least squares regression line. Um, the least squared regression line is also abbreviated LSRL, which is a term you're going to hear me say a lot in this section. And the least squared regression line is the line of best fit. So let's do an example over here. I've got this data from last time, diameter and weight of various melons. So if you made a scatter plot, they only have five points, but it kind of looks something like this. Okay. Well, the least squared regression line would be the line that has the best attempt to fit this data. So it be some line there. These are not in a perfectly straight line. So if you fit it the best you can, it ends up looking kind of something like this. That purple line would be the line of best fit. Um, your calculator can calculate the equation of that line. And it turns out, um, in this particular case, the equation of that line is y equals 1.22 plus 1.71x. Um, we normally actually will write it a little bit of unusual notation. This y value here is actually the y that you would the y predicted. In other words, it's not the actual y of the melon, it's what you would predict it to be. And the symbol for y predict is you put a little hat on top of y. Oh, isn't that cute? And actually, kind of more specifically than that even, you notice I didn't label the x-axis, but the x-axis would be diameter, and this would be weight. Usually to reflect that, um, rather than using x and y, we use what's on the x-axis. The best way to write this would be diameter hat is equal to 1.22 plus 1.71. Oh, shoot, I did it wrong. This is weight. Ah, darn it. Erase, 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 erase. I did it backwards. It should be weight hat is equal to 1.22 plus 1.71 times diameter. That's the way we'll normally do it. Don't forget the hat, and it's better to do it with actually the words rather than what X and Y represent. Um, by the way, the R value for this is uh, R is equal to 0 0.79. Okay, which means in the, it means it's relatively strong, um, not super duper strong, but you know moderately strong and positive. Okay, this these numbers, the correlation coefficient, which is the R value and the equation of the LSRL, these are numbers your calculator can tell you. And we're going to learn um, in class how to get those numbers, how to get those equa well number and equation. Okay, a little bit um, in general, I think you kind of know that in general the equation of any line is y equals mx plus b. We're going to kind of just change the letters a little bit. So this is for any line. Oh, gee, what does it even say? <laughs> any line. The stylus is not great. Uh, for LSRLs, we're going to talk about y hat is equal to a plus bx. So it's a little bit goofy. Up here, m was the slope, b is the y-intercept. Now we're just reversing things. So A is the y-intercept, and B is the slope. Okay, slope. And this is for an LSRL, which is why I wrote it the other way around. I wrote the uh, x variable attached to the second number rather than the first number on the previous page. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about how, which are and again, your calculator is almost always going to calculate these things. Um, but I want to talk about how does your calculator find the y-intercept and the slope. There's some formulas here. First, the way the calculator calculates the slope is with the equation b equals r s sub y over s sub, that's an s, s sub x. The stylus is not great today. s sub x. So that means r is the correlation coefficient. Standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x. Now, how would you figure out standard deviation of y? Well, it probably would do one var stats on whatever the list, the variables are in the y list, which might be L2. Similarly, you'd find S of x by doing standard deviation of, or one var stats on the x list, which might be in L1. Um, so that, that's always how you figure out the slope. Think about going back to your y equals mx plus d to mx plus b days, how did you always find the y-intercept? Well, you find the y-intercept, which in this case is the letter A, by plugging in a point. In a point, which means you need a point to actually plug in. And the point you actually know that is on the 
LSRL, or the least squared regression line, is X bar comma Y bar. Okay, so this is X bar is the mean of all the X's. That's the mean of all the things probably in L1. Y bar is the mean of all the things, the Y list, which is in L2. Okay? Um, so this actually will let you figure out um, the, A, the Y intercept, the Y intercept, and the slope. Okay? Um, so let's go back and look at this example a little bit more. Uh, so we talked about how for this particular data, we had, I'm not going to rewrite it all, but we had diameter and we had a weight of melons. And we had that weight hat is equal to 1.22 plus 1.71 times diameter. One thing you might ask is, okay, well, so what? Right? What does this 1.71 actually mean? Okay, what's the meaning of the slope? Meaning of slope. And what you would say is that for every increase of one unit of diameter, which was inches, the predicted weight goes up by 1.71 unit of weight, which in this case was ounces. So let's write that down. For every increase of one inch in, it's inches in diameter, the predicted weight increases by 1.71 ounces. So you'll often find yourself right, there'll be some questions on, you know, some tests and homework, what is the meaning of the slope, and this is kind of the uh, kind of boilerplate answer. So it's for every increase of one x unit, the predicted, don't forget that word predicted because it's weight hat, not just weight, and then increases or decreases depending on whether this number is positive or negative by whatever the slope is. Okay, and we'll do some examples of that certainly in class, but that's kind of the boilerplate answer. For every increase of one x, the predicted y increases by the slope. Okay, now let's do a similar thing for what does this number mean? What's the meaning of the y-intercept? Well, if you think about that, it's the place where it crosses the y-axis. It's the value that when the slope is, or sorry, when the, when the x value is zero. <clears throat> so meaning of the y-intercept. In this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, and very often it won't make a lot of sense, but let's just write this down. Um, it is predicted... It is predicted that a melon with diameter equals zero will weigh 1.22 ounces. And of course, that makes absolutely no sense. You can't have a melon with diameter zero. It's a, it's a non-existent melon. In this case, we would say this doesn't make any sense. Almost always the slope, the meaning of the slope, actually has real-world context. It makes sense given the problem. It's not always the case that the meaning of the y-intercept has kind of meaning in the real world. Okay? Um, but the sentence will, you know, you can write the sentence at least and then you kind of make a note, this makes no sense. This makes no sense. Okay? The real use, probably the most common use for the LSRL, is actually making a prediction. Making a prediction. Well, my writing is just terrible today. Prediction. That's supposed to be an E. There we go. Okay, good enough. Okay. So again, our equation was uh, weight hat is equal to 1.22 plus 1.71 diameter. And a typical question might be something like, predict the weight of a melon with a diameter of 7 inches. Let's write that down. Okay. Predict the weight of a melon with diameter equal to 7. 
And you do exactly what you think you would do, which is you just plug in diameter equals 7. And now it's much, sometimes you'll mix up x and y, but if you just write it like this, you almost can't. So weight hat, and again, the hat means predicted, 1.22 plus 1.71 times 7. And I get that weight hat is equal to 13.19 ounces. Okay, so uh, one thing you might notice, however, when I did this question is that this number 7 right here was bigger than any of the diameters I had given you in the context of the problem. Okay, This number 7 was outside the range of the data, wasn't it? The biggest diameter I'd given you in the previous list was actually 6.1. This is a little bit bigger. So technically what I just did here, I got this number, but actually think about, I mean, what if, what instead of giving you 7, what if I'd given you 70 or like, you know, 100,000? You could do the calculations, but it might not make a lot of sense given the real context of the question. So there's a word, which is kind of a fun vocabulary word, it makes you feel really smart. It's called extrapolation. An extrapolation means making a prediction outside the range of data. Range of data. So what I just did in this example, this was an example of extrapolation, right? Um, so whenever you ask to make a prediction, you should make sure that you are not extrapolating. And if you are, you should write a little note that says something to the effect of, and I'll write this kind of note for this particular problem. This is an example. Oh, gee. This, this, what's going on? My whole thing just rotated. I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to go to the next page and write this thing. So what I should have written here is a sentence something like this. This is an example, example of extrapolation, and these results, you're going to like this, should be interpreted with caution. Kind of a good example of extrapolation is if I ask you to kind of, if I gave you the height of a person between the ages of 0 and 10, and you kind of made a, you know, a graph of their height, oh look, as they get older they're getting taller, and I said predict how tall this person would be when they are, I don't know, 70 years old, you might think, oh my gosh, they're going to be a giant because actually it continues. Well, what we know about height is that of course it levels off at a certain place, it's the way human beings are. So predicting their height at some point later on in their life would be an example of extrapolation. Okay? Um, so you should not extrapolate. Now the example on the previous page was a kind of an example of extrapolation, yes, but it wasn't too far outside the range of the data, whereas predicting someone's height when they're 70 years old would clearly be an example of extrapolation. Okay? Um, I think I'm going to stop there and talk about the next thing on the, uh, in the next lecture. Goodbye.